New Jersey, and we are just about set to go to our main event, and the main event tonight featuring junior welterweights, Razai Bramble, who tonight will go by his old name of Livingstone Bramble. He says, I'm doing that for mom, and Tony Martin, and it should be an interesting fight, and which Razai Bramble will show up tonight? Former lightweight champ Razai Bramble is ready for one more assault on a world title now as a junior welterweight. He thought he was headed there when he shot contender Harold Brazier with a second round knockout win. And for Bramble, it was a huge win. Then he would take on Kenny Vice. He dominated Vice and took him out here in the sixth round. And then it was time for Santos Cardona. This was the match that was to propel him into a title shot with Julio Cesar Chavez, but Bramble lost, and now he needs a win badly. Tony Martin is also making a strong bid for a title shot. He was thought to be a likely contender in 1987 when he took out Charlie Choo Brown. But then a loss to Sammy Fuentes set him back. However, here in 1990, he has had four straight wins, like this one over Howard Stewart. But the big one came against Ricky Myers. Martin boxed and counterpunched beautifully to take a decision, but he says tonight he wants to knock Bramble out. Which, of course, brings us to the diehard keys to victory. Huh? Well, for Livingstone Bramble, uh, the, his good defense, it's, that's the key to him. It's always what gets him in the fight. I think he should rough Martin up. Uh, Sammy Fuentes was effective with that, and I don't think Tony Martin responds well to that. For Martin, he's got to make Bramble come to him. When people go to Bramble, he blocks all those punches, then he counters them. He needs to make them come forward, and then Martin is going to have to counterpunch as well as he did against Myers. Well, if Bramble fights the fight the way he told us he was going to this morning, then he will take your advice, and he will rough him up because he was really no nonsense and I've, we've seen this guy a hundred times maybe not literally but we've seen the guy fight an awful lot and when he tells us he's really going to go after the guy I have a tendency to believe him I really do think that's the way he will fight him tonight yeah and I think uh, that for Bramble he feels very much that he's got to get a knockout in this fight to win he thinks he's got to get a knockout just to be marketable just to, to let the world know yes I can fight a Julio Cesar Chavez not enough to beat a Tony Martin by decision and that takes Bramble a little bit out of his style he might need that Martin come to him and then counter him to try and knock him out. And Tony Martin said the same thing. He feels that he's got to get Bramble out of there, too. Martin feels he not only has to win the fight and beat Bramble, but he's yeah. got to win it impressively for people to think, hey, it was Tony Martin that did it. It wasn't a declining Razai Bramble. And I think Martin knows that people don't think of him as such an impressive puncher, and this would certainly change it for him. And here is Tony Martin coming toward the ring right now. His last fight, a very good fight. A win over Ricky Myers, and it was really Myers who was the guy who was really considered to be the up-and-comer, not Tony Martin in that fight. Yeah, and he shocked everybody with what was really a, a very good technical performance. Tony Martin, very bright, very articulate young man. And Razai Bramble comes into the ring, comes dancing into the ring. To the strains of reggae music, which hurts uh, his trademark. He's pumped up for that. This is more animated than you normally see Livingstone Bramble. My, this is uh, quite a departure for him. He could become the MC Hammer of boxing. Uh, he's a really interesting guy, actually. And he's a guy who really does belie his image, too. He has this image of being a tough guy and a guy who used to keep pit bulls. And, and he's really a very nice guy and a very, very bright guy. Much of it spawned during his first fight with Mancini during that era, but now he's... And was, you, I've never seen him this animated before a fight, though. Interesting. That was all spawned by a hotshot PR guy, too. That's true, <laughs> yes. Razai Bramble says he's fighting this one for his mom, and his mom's down to the Virgin Island. She's watching tonight for the first time. They got cable back because Hurricane Hugo blew out all the cable systems on the island. Here's Michael Buffer. Let's meet him. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and the King of Bears, Budweiser, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. The chairman is Jerry Gormley. Board members Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison. Deputy Commissioners Lawrence Wallace and R. Yogi Hiltner. Chief Physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending Physicians, Dr. Dominic Coletta, Jr. and Dr. Charles Wilson. The timekeeper is Arthur Spell. Alternate referee, Arthur Mercanti, counting for the knockdown seconds. And the three judges assigned at ringside doing the scoring for this bout, Tommy Kazmarek, Eva Shane, and Richard Strange. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Merv Griffin's Resorts Casino Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 10 rounds. 
in the junior welterweight division. The referee for this bout is Ted Pitt. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim. He weighs 141 and one half pounds from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His professional record, 20 victories with six KOs, only three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Martin. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the pink trunks with blue letters. He's from Passaic, New Jersey, and weighs an even 141 pounds. His professional record, 30 victories with 18 KOs, only four defeats and two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, the former lightweight champion of the world, Rassai Rastaman Ramba. Instructions, give me a clean fight and I'll obey my commands at all times. Is that understood? Any questions? Good luck to both of you. I guess Livingston is still Brenda's uh, unlisted name. Tony Martin, meanwhile, very confident fighter, comes off a big win, and there is Razai Bramble. And we're set to go. Bramble comes out throwing punches. He went after Harold Brazier very strongly at the beginning and did knock out Harold Brazier. Though I have to say, there you see the knockout percentage and Bramble is the harder puncher. In that fight, Harold Brazier had a bad injury, couldn't lift his arm properly. It's not to say Bramble might not have won, but certainly was shocking that the uh, knockout occurred so quickly since then Brazier has gotten that shoulder repaired. But it is unlike Bramble to really be that aggressive early. He likes to make fighters come to him a little bit. He really didn't whack Harold Brazier early on in that fight. Brazier never quite recovered from that first punch. Good overhand right by Bramble. That might be his best power weapon. Good jab by Tony Martin. Bramble has always been a man who will block lots of punches and then explode with his own combinations. This is really a step up for Tony Martin. And when he's had steps up in the past, as he did against Sammy Fuentes, he's been found wanting. On a right hand, got Bramble off it. What we have here tonight also is two of the slickest defensive fighters you're likely to see. This will test the metal of our punch profile. People, Logan Hobson, Bob Canobo, because it's tough to know what lands when, when guys like this are, are in there. And of course, it'll test the metal of the judges as well. It's a perfect example. This punch is blocked by Bramble. And there he punches blocked by Mark. Yeah, exactly. That's a right hand that got through, but you can see these men are, are very skilled. Martin with the double left hook. One thing we saw about uh, Tony Martin in the Myers fight, his left hook has improved dramatically. Didn't used to be that effective a weapon, but it's it's better now. Razai Bramble. And I think this kind of sets the tone for what this fight is going to be, and that is a very tactical fight, despite the fact that we're talking about get the, uh, getting the other one in the gang to tell you all about it. Detroit Lions have got to be the most exciting losing team in the NFL. I'll tell you what, Barry Sanders is oh. just making a believer out of this kid. In the first round, as you can see, good defensive round. Really. That's not so much sloppy punching as it is good defense. Not at all. Yeah, and Bramble with the edge uh, by a bit. Bramble getting in with his jab. Now, Martin told us, uh, we talked to him this morning about how when he had his big shot against Fuentes, he said, uh, 
I knocked on the door then. I couldn't get through tonight. I'm going to kick it in. Bum Phillips, I think, said that originally, didn't I he? think it was him. They never did it him or Socrates. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. I get the two mixed up yeah. often. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> and Socrates did the boom Ruski, right? I think so. That's a good right hand by Randall. Yeah, that, that's, his, that's his big weapon. And he may have made Tony Martin feel that punch. I think he did. And I think the thing is, he's getting his jab in, uh, Bramble, so that right hand is effective. See Martin being more aggressive. He knows he's going to have to be. He gets him with his own hook, says Martin. Well, that's like Bramble has been in there with the, the best in his division. In a couple of divisions, really. Yeah, that's what I mean. Whichever one he happens to be. Yeah, as, as a lightweight, when he won the title, of course, he fought the best. And even as a junior welterweight, beating Harold Brazier, lost to Freddie Pendleton and had a draw with Freddie Pendleton. So he's his nemesis. Of course, he ended up losing his title to Edwin Rosario, his lightweight title. Good right hand again by Brandon. He's getting there with that counter right, and there's the left hook. An overhand right by Bramble, that's his big weapon. But you know what, Tony Martin's almost willing to take that to try and land that left hook. We'll see who's gonna, who will fold first from what punch. Will Martin fold from the right, or will, will Bramble fold from the left hook? Bramble was making Martin miss though. You may notice, look at the hair of Bramble. He's got that kind of, uh, tail sticking up. He bunched that up because when he leaves it loose, good right by Bramble, he says the judges see that hair flying around and they think everything's landing so he's going to mat his hair down so that that doesn't happen. It doesn't fly around. Yeah, he said the sweat flies off and it looks like he's being hit when he's not. He's having a very good round here in round two against Tony Martin. Establishing a lot. Let's caught him with gloves. It was a very good round for Razza Bramble. A quintessential Bramble round. Let's see what they're telling Martin to try and get him hooked up. Let's step, step back this time, this round. Just stay there and turn the right hands up on the knee. He's sitting on him. And keep your left hand up, okay? Keep your left hand up. He's going to put it down there and do something with it. All right? That's it. Don't wait for him. Don't wait for him. Catch the jab. Catch the jab with your right hand. Hey, wipe your water. James Morton, we saw in the corner of uh, Razai Bramble, who, of course, for years worked with Sugar Ray Leonard. He's the master of the understated, Jack Morton. Never heard him raise his voice. He is pretty uh, calm, e equilibrium. Again, Bramble in round two, and many of those 36 were, were really big shots. When you fight Bramble, you have to figure out a way to open him up. If you can, if he stays in his shell, off the defensive shell, and then unloads those big punches, you're not going to hit him. You need him in exchanges, actually, like he's in right now, to be able to hit it. Good shots there by Martin getting through the defense. Ironically, the man who got through Bramble's defense probably the best, good right by Martin, was Ray Mancini over the first seven rounds of their bout. He meted out a lot of punishment to Bramble, but folded because Bramble came back and nailed him. And there's the reason why Livingstone Bramble ended up beating Ray Mancini. He switched to the lefty stance and, and Mancini had trouble with lefties. Let's see if it has a big impact on Tony Martin. He's a very crafty fighter. Now he switches back again. Yeah, he's been around the track, been a champion. And that switching tactic has served him well in a number of fights. But in this round, Tony Martin is getting through that defense. There's the good counter uppercut, which I talked about earlier.
See, now Martin has Gravel coming to him, and he is counterpunching him. That is what he wants. Except when Gravel gets in those good right hands. Got up over the glove of Martin. See, but when Bramble does go for those big home run shots, even though he's landing them there, it opens him up for Martin to hit him. And that's really what Martin wants. He just does, Martin just doesn't want to get hit with as many of those big shots as Bramble's hitting him with. And right now, Bramble is getting home with the right. Good competitive round down here. It's a high caliber fight so far. I like the junior welterweight division. I think there are a lot of good fighters in that division. That's what his corner told him to do. Oh, and that's going to be a good Coming to the end of the, thir of the third round, and a very good third round. We'll be back. Tony Martin left his jab out there, and it's a no-no. Bramble with the overhand right, and that's been his big weapon in this fight so far. A little bit of swelling under the right eye of Tony Martin. Surprised it's not over the left side with all the overhand rights he's taken. Our punch profile from the third round, as you can see, Bramble again with a slight edge. And that was actually round I ended up giving to Martin, but you can see it was very close. Tony Martin being more aggressive here in the fourth. You know, for Isaac Bramble, it's kind of a, a, a difficult position. He wants to go knock Martin out, and yet his style doesn't dictate going after a guy. He's better off when the guy punches and punches, and he blocks him, then he goes, he counters him. But Bramble's so anxious to get a knockout, he's being a little more aggressive than he wants to be in this bout, thus getting hit a little bit more than he would hope to. Though he's certainly doing well in the fight. Bramble does that to you because he is so hard to hit. Bramble looking as quick as I've seen. Him. He's getting off his punches pretty well. Not throwing as many combinations as we have seen in the past. Martin getting him to open up a little bit, but not landing those counter punches as well as he would like. Good straight left by Bramble. His jab has been pretty effective in this round. That was a nice right hand by Bramble. You know what Bramble really does well is when he gets his man turned, he can get his own feet around quick enough to get some leverage on a punch. You know the punch that Martin has in his arsenal that's always been effective against, and here it is, is the uppercut. One punch against uh, Raza Bramble that has worked when a, when a fighter can use it. That's one that Mancini used and some others have used. Because it, it goes right up the middle of that defense. Again, a close round. The early part dominated by Bramble and then Martin coming on. That's the guy exchange. In the corner of Razai Bramble. What are you talking about? Finish it off tonight. Keep pounding that body like that. The jam worked it all the way up. Working down to the body and then went back up top of the jam. That's what made it work. Look at the short. Look at the short. 
short. Look at those little snaps. Little short snaps on there. Get it through. What can you do? Now keep going to the bottom and back on top. Just like you are. Here Brandon is slipping with Martin is short and getting a kind of a chopping right hand. It wasn't a great shot, but it shows you that the, the defense of Bramble is still there. And it shows you that Tony Martin is frustrated about not being able to counter punch well. Bramble, very quick. We were talking about how quick he was. He was very quick with his bike. Yeah, he moves, he moves well. He's one of these guys who runs around the ring and makes you think of Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard, but uh, he did move well. Tried the lefty stance for a little while. It didn't pay off, so he's back to righty. Thanks, Martin. Find again. Brown will throw the right hand a little bit shorter. That's how he lunged with the punch. Martin is not a devastating puncher, and you see that his punches are not having a huge effect on Bramble when he lands cleanly. But he's not a total pity pat puncher either. He does have some snapping. Yeah, he sits down well on his punches, actually. He certainly has a strong upper body. Bramble's hands a lot lower than we're used to seeing them now in this round. Very rare that they're that low. Martin has really uh, abandoned his jab to great extent. He's missing a lot, Tony Martin. And now starting to work the jab a little bit, just as you said. Mm -hmm. huh? And it's going to improve his accuracy. Now this is this is Bramble's way of getting a guy to throw punches. He'll walk in with those gloves high and say, come on, go ahead, punch. I want you to exert some energy and you're not going to hit me anyway. Barry Tompkins with Al Bernstein. We're at Resorts in Atlantic City, watching Junior Wetterwitz go 10 rounds on the right of your screen in the pink trunks, that is Razai Bramble, on the left in the black trunks of the white scarf, Tony Martin. Bramble looking ahead. His management says to a February 2nd fight, which has already been signed, should he win this one against Julio Cesar Chavez. If that is true, then clearly much riding on the outcome of this bout. Bramble is a, as a lefty landing the right hook and landing it again. He will stay in this posture if it works, which it's working right now. He won't go back so quick. Coming to the end of the fifth round now, and a very good ending of round five for Razai Bramble. In round five, 50% of Bramble's jabs landed. There's one right there. And he has 36% landed in the whole fight, but in, in round five, he really stepped up the pace with that punch. We come to the sixth round, a fight that you have the feeling is not really strongly in the corner of either man, although Bramble appears to have done enough. I've been giving Bramble uh, most of the recent rounds in there. I have ran Bramble ahead by three, but all of those close rounds. And uh, there might be some that could have gone into Tony Martin's camp. Good example of what you were saying, of Bramble waiting for Martin to come to him. Well, this is my night to uh, to disagree with the strategy of fighters, I guess. I thought Leon Taylor should have stayed as a lefty more, and I, I could see Bramble doing that, too. He was very effective as a southpaw. And in his case, he really... Oh, there he is. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, Razai. Right. Do I have a thing patched right into his ear? <laughs> he did switch to lefty, and I, I think he was pretty effective in that posture. <laughs> And the main reason is he was able to get his right hook in from this stance. See if it continues or if Martin has figured him out. There's Martin with that quick uppercut. Ah, guess what? I'd go back to righty now. <laughs> you know why? Because the uppercut is working for Martin when Bramble's a lefty. Martin, get Martin getting there with a lot of consistency here. And there, look at Bramble. See, he's a smart boxer. He, oh, he's hurt with that right hand. I'm surprised now I'm going to switch around. 
clearly the Martin uppercut's working where Gramble is a lefty, so now I think it's time to go back to righty. It worked before, but Martin has been smart enough to pick up on this. So the left-handed stance is not bothering him. There Gramble goes back to righty. Boxing changes within instances, and this is a good example. Gramble worked as a lefty in the fifth round, but not here in the sixth. Martin having a very good round here. His best, probably. Clearly getting the better of it right now. Toe-to-toe -to -toe for both men. Well, Bramble saw what I saw, that he was effective in the fifth as a lefty, switched to that posture here in the sixth, and paid for it. To Martin's credit. To Martin's credit, because Martin figured it out. He figured out what to do against Bramble as a lefty, and uh, now Bramble's back to the right-handed stance. And now he goes back to left for a moment. Good round for Tony Martin. From you, what I want from you now is a jab right hand, jab right hand hook with a with a hook and right hand back. Got it? When it's there, all right? All right so don't reach with your jab, okay? Here's Mark now. Here's the punch. I mentioned earlier in this bout that the uppercut works against Bramble, and especially works as a lefty. And there he landed it two times, got Bramble's attention, and shoved him back. Another angle shows you the same punches. Excellent uppercut by Martin, and he pushed Bramble back with that. That was the second of that, that sequence. And we start the seventh round. production dropping way off and Martin skyrocketing. Boy, was that an effective round or not? Even though the percentage landed by Martin wasn't big. Good. good overhand right by Bramble. Well, they want Martin to land the jab, and he's landing. He is going after Bramble. He hurt him right hand. He's hurt. Bramble holding on. Martin trying to, trying to get him out of there. Very accurate punching by Tony Martin. Right up the middle, and that's where, if any place, that's where Bramble is vulnerable. I think one of the keys here was that Martin was able to start landing that jab, but also the uppercut, which he started landing in the last round. Well, Tony Martin's dragging himself right back into this fight, I can assure you. Martin taking a little rest here, but Bramble not able to really capitalize because he's still maybe a little stunned from what happened in the beginning of this round. And Bramble not getting there with those right hands like he was earlier. I'm telling you, Martin uh, punched himself on a little bit in the first part of this round, taking a breather now. He is seeing openings, but not unloading. And Bramble unable to do anything in this round. So even that early flurry could be enough for Tony. Oh, yeah. At this point, I would say it would have to be unless Bramble did something really dramatic. There's a lot of punches landed by Martin, and Bramble has not landed too much at all. Hasn't thrown much in this round. Nor the last. Again, the uppercut by Martin. What a huge weapon it's becoming. And, and again, wow. And that hurt Bramble again. Are you 
pointed it out earlier that that has always been a very good weapon for Martin, and Bramble has always been there for it, and certainly that has been the case in the last two rounds. A big round for Tony Martin. We'll be back. To that end, Bramble threw only one jab in the last round, so we're going to keep a close eye on that. Possibly because of that left shoulder, of course, hurting him. The best thing that they can hope for is that it perhaps is just only a cramp, although it's a very unusual place to cramp. And you can see him flex that arm. Oh, boy, that's a signal. <laughs> Tell you what, that is certainly a signal to uh, Tony Martin. We saw him doing that as, as, as recently, as long ago as two or three rounds ago. Yes. I didn't take it too seriously, but uh, obviously something wrong. Wouldn't it be ironic if he ended up losing his spot because of a left shoulder injury when that is exactly the way many people believe he won the match? As you look at Martin in the last round, that's how he won the match against Harold Brazier. Brazier with a, a hurt left shoulder. And we'll keep a close eye on it. Look at Bramble, 37 punches thrown and only 12 connects in that round. Only 31 punches and five connects in the previous round. And he's showing exclusively right hands. Now, Tony Martin at this point, surely, surely, they had to see. Good uppercut by Martin. They had to see what was going on in that corner. They had to see Bramble flexing that left shoulder. Right hands are the ticket here. Jab, jab, straight right hand or uppercuts by Martin. Take advantage of that shoulder being hurt. I don't know what it is, though, because if he was able to swing his arm as he did at yeah. the start of this round, you would think it's not a rotator cuff or anything like that, because yes. he wouldn't be able to lift it. No way would you be able to do this. You'd think shooting a straight jab out would be the least problem. Throwing a hook, maybe, but a jab, you'd think he'd be able to throw. Again, the uppercuts by Martin. So effective with that, and it's especially effective when Bramble goes after him. And put yourself in Livingstone or Razai Bramble's brain right now. You know you could fight Julio Cesar Chavez possibly. You know you have to take Tony Martin out of there to do it. And yet, you may be hurting. You know your style doesn't dictate that you go after him. You're getting hit with counter punches. What do you do? You can't wait for Martin to come to your encounter. You have to go to him. And in that little flurry just a moment ago, there in microcosm might have been what Razai Bramble has to deal with. He threw about eight punches. There was one left hand, and it was a cursory left hand. Big right again by Martin. Tony Martin had better be careful that he's not so economical with his punches here that he lets Bramble slip, slip around it. Low blow by Tony Martin. Now Bramble's going to have to fight a lot of moxie, all of it that he's gained over his 36 fights, to win this one. Because clearly there's a problem with his left shoulder. Now using the jab, and I, that's what they're telling him. It's a very effective weapon. You should be really stepping in with that punch. Bramble in a situation where he not only has to survive, he's got to win rounds. And he's clearly a one-handed fighter. Into Bramble's corner. Trying to convince Ted Peck that he wasn't hurt. The only jabs in the last round we wanted to point out were right jabs by Bramble when he was a southpaw. You got to use it, baby. Convince me. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's almost like a con game now, isn't it? It really is. He has to convince them he can use that left hand so they don't stop this fight thinking he's hurt. And in the old days in boxing, no, they would have never thought of stopping the fight because of an arm injury. These days they do because they don't want to see people get hurt in that way either. Which is exactly what Ted Pick said to him. I don't want to see you get hurt. Now look at the jabs oh in the eighth round. Wow. And remember, only one in the seventh round. And remember in the fifth round, before that shoulder was hurt, how Bramble landed 50% of his jabs and threw a lot of them. In the corner of Bramble, they're not sure about the nature of the injury we've been told. No, I, he's trying to tell his people in the corner there's nothing wrong.
if there isn't anything wrong, it would be very bizarre that Brambo would just stop jabbing. Certainly too smart a fighter for that and too effective a one. But from his standpoint, you would see where he'd want to try and promulgate that myth that there is nothing wrong. And Tony Martin has in front of him that moment in boxing at the age of 27 that he had when he fought Sammy Fuentes, and he has it again, except this time he has it, and he is in a position to make it happen, to get a win, push himself into the top 10, possibly, in the junior welterweight division. And, and make no mistake, this is a different Tony Martin. This is not the guy we used to see two, two, three, four years ago who couldn't punch very well, didn't set down on his punches, wouldn't stand there and fight with you. Uh-uh. This is a very, very good boxer puncher. Well, we've talked about this on numerous occasions. Every now and then a fighter comes along and he gets a win like the one that Tony Martin had against Ricky Myers. All of a sudden he thinks, hey, I can beat anybody. And he may be right. Good right hand there. Now, it's true he may be fighting a one-armed man in, Living, in Livingstone Bramble, but hey, that's not his fault. He was doing pretty well when Bramble had both arms. It was a, it was a pretty close fight. Very tough for Livingstone Bramble, or yeah. as I Bramble, because he's coming off a loss, remember, so now, very difficult. Should he lose to Tony Martin, he's looking at back-to-back -back losses, and it's a, it's a ways back up the ladder up for that. Yeah, I certainly know Julio Cesar Chavez then. They, can, they can't sell that fight. They may not be able to sell it anyway, based upon this. Even if he should eke out a decision win, I don't know. Well, if he gets a win, then you can say, hey, yeah. I won and my arm was bad. That's and true. It's not an excuse, because no. there's no question he's hurting. Yeah, there's no doubt that that left hand is hurt. And that's part of what's adding to Tony Martin's bravery and the fact that he's able to get in there with it. But again, Martin was doing fairly well before. Though certainly the big part of Martin's uh, assault has come in the last three rounds. So we come to the end of the ninth round, and again, Tony Martin is the guy who is dictating the pace of this fight. Round, felt around, obviously didn't feel any damage there, but uh, I'll be shocked and amazed if there's nothing wrong with that left hand. It has to be. So the problem for Bramble now is what does he do? He tried lefty thinking the right hook could get in there. Tried the conventional stance and tried to get Martin into a brawl and throw the right. He's, he's got to do something, obviously. Now remember, I had Bramble ahead after the first five rounds by three points. I had him winning four of the first five rounds. And since then, it's been pretty much Tony Martin. Could still be a close fight. On your card, a one-point fight for Martin. I have Martin coming back to win these recent rounds. Through the first nine rounds, the production of Bramble has dropped off dramatically in the last couple. Remember, he was landing such a good percentage before. Right hand by Bramble got there. Of course, in Martin's case, when you know you only have to protect yourself against one hand, it's like overplaying a basketball player who's strictly a one-handed player. Precisely. You've played against me, I assume. Here's <laughs> Martin with the uppercut. And now he, he is looking for that right hand like he did earlier, knowing it's, it's hard for Bramble even to block it to get his left up. But Bramble had his moments early in this round, and Tony Martin's not throwing that many punches. And it's a close fight, so you got to keep all that in mind. As much as we talk about Bramble's shoulder hurting, it's who lands what punches that counts. Another factor here, too, is one of, oh, good right hand by Martin. I don't know if Bramble stumbled or was hurt by that. One of the three judges scoring this fight has been wildly inconsistent, consistently. Yes. So that, too, could have an effect on the outcome. Good counter hook and the jab by Martin. Looking again and landing the uppercut is Martin. Bramble occasionally getting those right hands in, but I don't know if that's enough here. I have to feel for Bramble for an injury to play such a big role in this bout. No question. When it would have been certainly a good, close, tough bout, but let's face it, Bramble was doing better in the beginning part of this bout until he got injured. He's doing much better. To take nothing away from Tony Martin either. Now it's very tough, very tough for 
Livingston Bramble, or Razai Bramble, or Sylvester Brown, which was his original That's true. Name. But he's a gritty performer and has hung in there with that injured arm or shoulder, whichever it is. And it looks like Tony Martin may be boxing his way to a decision it looks like. Could be close. The question is how much did Livingstone Bramble do in the first five rounds? I think the bell rung. Now it did. Very good fight. And the only thing that marred it was that injury to Bramble. It had the makings of a really, really good fight and would have been even more competitive had Bramble, of course, been able to use that arm. But the thing that is strange is that he has been able to lift it over his yes. head. Which... And that is the weird thing. You wonder what kind of injury could create it so that he couldn't throw the jab and yet would be able to do what he does with it. To keep his hand up to yeah. protect himself. There you see Martin creating a big edge in the last three or four rounds. He had such a big edge in those rounds that uh, he probably negated what happened earlier. So we, we don't really know what it is. We'll try to talk to him and find out. Meanwhile, let's get the decision from Michael Buffer. Mike? Ladies and gentlemen, here at Merv Griffin's Resorts, we go to the scorecards. Here's the official scoring. Richard Strange scores the belt 97, 93. Eva Shane has it 98, 92. And Tommy Kazmarek scores it 98, 93. For the winner by unanimous decision from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tony Martin. Well, much bigger margin I had by two points, but nevertheless, I can live with that. Yeah. At least it was consistent, and that's all you can ever ask. So Tony Martin, an upset winner over Razar Bramble. It's upset night in AC. After a while, I, when I push it out, I just wouldn't have no power. It would technically go to the left, and I couldn't even bring it back. I just couldn't throw it out. So I just started using the right hand, which I thought I won the fight with the right hand only, but, you know, I, I don't know. He must have thrown more punches, but I land more, you know, look at my face, not a mark on it, you know. I thought it was closer than that. I thought maybe he lost by a couple, but it was closer. Did you, uh, what do you, what can you do now? You're going to have to go back, I guess, and see if this arm gets healed up, huh? I'm going to just let the arm get healed up and come right back. I'm with good people now. Um, I'm not down. I'm just, I'm ready to go. I didn't get beat up. Right. Jeez, you know. Um, um, it's it just one of those things. I'm going to just go back, and I'll be in the ring um, pretty soon. Okay, oh, congratulations yeah. on a good effort. Razai Bramble with a courageous effort, to be sure. Let's get Tony Martin in here. Tony, congratulations. Now, now this is a medical report. We understand your foot is bothering you. Uh, well, actually, it's my calves. Uh, uh, well, thanks to Temple Sports, I'm back in... Uh, back in operation my, my uh but did it bother you during the fight well the left leg was torn i tore the uh, muscle in my left leg so i was really a little leery and that's why i'm wearing this brace that i have on the right leg was just a poor muscle so it wasn't gonna be too bad anyhow about the sixth round was a, it was a pretty close fight i thought up to the midpoint when you started taking advantage of the uppercut did you see that his arm was hurt did that have an impact i also saw that but you know still you know i thought at first he might have been faking it because he could throw he threw a really hard jab that kept knocking me off balance a little bit. So I said, I better go ahead and take the fight to him and bag him up and see what he can do doing that way. Okay. And then I saw his left hand not doing anything. Yeah, I said, and that was the me. point we think where it might have been his hurt right, as well. right hand. Yeah, okay. I thought so too. But, uh, you know, at any rate, I, he's a tough a tough fight because defense is so good, you know, and yeah. it's hard to break it. And Very anytime tough. I got him off balance or loose, I said, let me just right, take Congratulations, Tony. We got to run. We'll see you next time. Okay. okay. Right. Moves perhaps into the upper echelon of the junior welterweight division. Certainly, Homestead will be the case after this win over Razai Bramble. Woody Martin upsetting uh, Razai Bramble. A little less of an upset in that case, but uh, he took advantage of the fact that uh, Bramble obviously hurt his left hand, but also fought extremely well. A real step up for Tony Martin and a, a real step back for Razai Bramble. Very tough. It is indeed. He will have a tough time getting back to that championship level, although knowing him, he'll try. For Tony Martin, it sets up lots of possible matches. Hey, how about him against Charles Murray, perhaps, for that USBA crown somewhere down the road? That's an excellent fight for him. He sure is a guy who is fighting with great confidence right now. More than he's ever had as a pro, and you have to respect it. In Atlantic City, New Jersey, it's boxing action on Sports Channel America.